Okay, hi everybody. I went live a few minutes earlier than I had announced. Um, one, because I wanted to make sure I didn't have any problems with technical difficulties, which evidently was smart because Facebook did something new. They confused me. Uh, so it took me a second to figure out what was going on. And then two, I wanted to make sure you guys had time to see the notification and to know that this is coming up. So I'm going to hang out and wait. Um, and we'll see if anybody shows up. And if not, I will go ahead and talk anyway, and then post this, and maybe it'll be of use. I will say again, though, that, you know, I'm hoping this will be useful to be able to have Facebook Live, talk about everything that's going on, how to manage mental health with an emphasis on anxiety, because that's my specialty, um, and depression, and stress in general. If this is useful, I have some ideas planned out for today, and based on feedback I get, then I am happy to do this, honestly, probably on a daily basis for a while. I am seeing clients online, but I'm not seeing nearly my full caseload, and it looks like I have a lot of time on my hands, and I don't do well with not having productive stuff to do. So this is my way of staying busy and hopefully giving back to the community. Um, and again, tonight also, I'm going to, assuming Zoom cooperates, host an online support group for our local community through Zoom. I also know both of these were put together at the last minute, so if this seems to be a flop, I will absolutely give it a second try in a day or two and see if I can't get more information out for people. And I'm going to excuse me, but I'm going to have to, like... My eyesight. my eyesight is not the best. So you're going to see me doing the old lady peer to see what's happening. And maybe even check my phone also to see what's happening. Right now, my only notification is that Melanie Civil Counseling is live. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> I might go on here to see any comments or questions or anything. If anybody shows up. Oh, I just got a Facebook notice. There's an important service announcement. Espresso Royale drive through at Neil and Kirby will remain open during the COVID-19 closing, closings. That's a friend of mine. He's very relieved because he needs his espresso or his latte or whatever he needs every day. So I'm glad that he has what he needs. Has anybody else noticed when they're out and about just how itchy? My face itches so bad right now. It doesn't even make sense. I feel a little bit awkward just hanging out waiting for people. We have two people watching? I don't know. So I usually do Facebook Lives on my phone. This is a little different. Um, and I can't see who's watching and I can always see who's watching on my phone. So that's a little confusing. So if you guys want to say hi and let me know you're here, that will give me some encouragement. Um, also, if you have questions, if you want me to address specific mental health topics during this time, uh, please post them now, and I will be more than happy to address them. I have a couple from another Facebook group that I posted that I was going to be doing this on. So I have a couple questions I'm going to address, and then we will see from there. Time is it? All right, so it's one o'clock. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started and see somebody's here. Hi, Joy. Thank you, Bestie. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and see if other people pop in. I think the first thing that I want to talk about, and this is, of course, in relation to COVID-19, the pandemic, um, the mass closings, everything. Our world is just changing so quickly right now that it makes my head spin like literally a week ago a week ago today i was sitting in this office with my clients talking about what we always talk about corvin 19 was not even brought up at all during sessions because although i think we all knew it was happening it was so far away it had nothing to do with us and then for some reason something sunk in so that on tuesday i started kind of talking about it how are you doing is it affecting you how are you feeling? Are you scared? 
Most of my clients were like, no, nah, whatevs, I'm good. And then by Wednesday, when I started talking about it, that was primarily college students. And they're all like, and I cuss, so I hope I don't offend anybody, but it's who I am. Um, so by Wednesday, my clients, my college clients are like, fuck, I don't think we're coming back after spring break. And that was the first I'd heard of it. So I was like, what? And so I started sending out emails to my clients as, you know, half the businesses in the, in the country did. And 20 minutes after I sent out my emails to everybody, we got the announcement that U of I was going online. I will say for me, I think that's a good thing, but it was also a huge shift for me because I work with, like I said, a lot of college students. So my clients were leaving. Some of them live out of state and I couldn't provide services. So we got no kind of closure. It was just like, I saw them one day and they were gone the next. Um, yeah, so that was, that was really shocking. And then Thursday and Friday, we continued talking and processing and doing all that stuff. I think Wednesday was probably when I sent out the email. If you're sick, please don't come in. I will offer telehealth. By Saturday, I was like, you know, maybe I should just go online. And then it was, I'll come into work, but I'll only go online. By Saturday night, I was like, I think I'll just stay home. And then, of course, we found out that the first person tested positive in Champaign. And you will notice, or maybe you won't, I am currently at work. That's because I'm also in the process of moving my office. I have impeccable timing. And so I had to come in for that. I will say I'm in the old Robeson building. And as far as I can tell, virtually nobody is here. This building is shut down, which I think is useful. Okay, so let's get to the mental health part. Again, I think the first thing I want to say is that I want to acknowledge that this is big and this is scary and that nobody has a blueprint for what's going on or what the proper ways to respond or what choices we should or should not make. And I just want to acknowledge that. So my goal is not to make you guys like not be scared, not be stressed, not do any of that. And honestly, as I'm talking about, and part of it is because I hate going live, but I can even feel my own heart. I can feel my own anxiety. So I just want to say that, yes, this is scary and that's okay. So what I'm going to talk about are ways to manage the scary and to get through this as best as we can. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be comfortable. I'm telling my clients basically, isn't going to fucking suck. Um, I wish I could say otherwise, but I can't lie about this. That's not useful. So with that understanding, I'm trying to see. No, I think it's just me and Joyce still. That's okay. Um, let's talk about steps that we can take to manage our stress, our anxiety, our depression, and to come through this the, the, the other side. Because I think that's also important to remember is that this will pass. This is horrible, but it is temporary. And in, we don't know when, a month, three months, six months, however long, I don't even think it'll be six months. At some point, we will be able to look back on this and remember it just as a horrific event that we experienced. And for those of you that are old enough that you were adults when you went through 9-11, that's what this feels like to me. The situation is different, right? So COVID-19 and 9-11 in many ways don't have any similarities other than it's a trauma that's affecting our entire nation simultaneously. It is, as one of my clients, and I'll give props, said to me, it is a moment of history that we are living through that will be in history books to come to in, in the future that is directly affecting us. It is a moment in time. It's a horrible moment in time, but it's just a moment in time. So ways to manage. My first thing is I want to say that exercise, and again, this is something I tell all my clients, but exercise, please, please, please get some cardio. I don't care if that is, if you're lucky enough to have a treadmill or an elliptical or something in your house, that's great. I don't, and honestly, I can't stay cooped up for the next two weeks. That might just drive me nuts. So for me, it's getting out and walking and walking and walking. And so in some ways, that's almost a benefit because hi sherry so i hate what's happening but i'm grateful that i can get outside and i can go for super long walks that gives me heart cardio which reduces my anxiety it dumps positive chemicals in my body so it lifts my mood it does a lot of really positive things um and honestly it, it gets me out of the house which i think is important but it gets me out of the house in a safe way and it gets me some sunlight in my eyes and on my skin. And that also is super important, especially for depression. So walk, run. If you're not old and broken down with bad knees like me, 
bike ride, get out and get some exercise. It's safe, it's healthy, and it will absolutely help manage everything. Another thing that I will probably do in the coming days as I get more and more cabin fever is I will probably have dogs, right? So I'll probably load my dogs into the car and just go for random drives in the country. My car is safe. I'll keep them, you know, I can even have the windows down, but whatever. It's just about getting me outside of the house and outside of my head. And I think that's super important to do. So cardio, go for car drives. Um, I don't know if anybody has other suggestions or ways to get out of the house safely. I want to hear them. I think probably I'll pop into Meadowbrook in the coming weeks to get some fresh air and exercise and see something other than my house and my town. Things like that. Another thing that is super useful for me, because if I just sit in my house and I dwell on what's going on, I will, it, I can't even, like, I don't even have words for how horrific that feels to me. So I need to find ways to be of use. I need to find ways to be useful. Hence the Facebook Live and the online support group tonight, why I'm still doing telehealth while I'm still meeting with clients, because actually that helps, again, get me outside of my head, focus on you guys, and kind of manage a little bit. So I need to find ways to volunteer, to be of use, to be of service. There's a million different ways. If you don't know how, I would recommend contacting your church, contacting the public health department, posting online to friends. I've started calling my older friends, my friends that um, I'm worried about. I've called my parents. Unfortunately, they live over by Chicago, um, so I can't go see them like I would like to, and I can't take care of them the way I want to but I can at least do that for older people in, in my area if they need it. And I think just calling them and saying, how are you, gets me outside of myself and makes them feel good. So find ways to be of service, find ways to be of use, find ways to get outside of your own head by helping others and stay connected. I live alone, so no partner, no kids, no one to think it's me, two dogs and a cat. And most of the time, I love that. But again, the thought of being isolated in my house and alone for two weeks just feels devastating to me. Like it truly does. And so I have to be connected. So I have to, you know, talk to my bestie every day. I'm calling my parents and checking on them. I'm doing this. And I hope in future times when I do Facebook lives about mental health, there, there will be more people here and that'll help me feel connected also. So stay connected with friends and family, stay connected with your church, stay connected with your community. This is a horrific thing, but at least we have technology and at least we have ways to stay connected without being face-to-face. -face. I will say face-to-face -face in person is better, um, but online is better than nothing. Let me think, what else am I, what else do I have here? Boundaries was another one. I have a little list that I'm reading off of. So everybody has different levels of safety. Everybody has different levels of comfort. I will tell you, again, I think I've already said that I decided to go online seeing all my clients. I feel very comfortable with that decision. I feel that it was the right decision for me. I feel like that let my clients off the hook on trying to decide whether or not they should come in if they didn't feel comfortable. Not all the therapists that I know are doing that. Some are still seeing people in person. I don't necessarily agree with them. I don't necessarily disagree. Like we don't have a flipping blueprint we don't we've never I've never seen none of us have seen this there is no this is what you do this is the right answer so I have to respect the choices they make while I have to make the choices for myself that I feel safe about I'm a member of the Zen Center in Champaign and yesterday we have like sitting periods and everything on Sunday mornings and I was supposed to be the service leader which means a position of responsibility yada yada and I ended up Saturday having to text and cancel and be like, I'm sorry, I can't come in. I feel bad that I didn't fulfill my obligation, but I'm also, I have to do what I feel safe doing. And if that doesn't make me feel safe, then I need to respect this and take care of myself the best way I know how. So I had to cancel. And God willing, the people in our lives will understand that and respect it. If not, there are bigger, bigger issues to be addressed. But if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't feel safe, then you absolutely get to say no. And in some ways you have an obligation to say no, because if you can protect yourself by saying no when something doesn't feel good, then that helps diminish the anxiety. Having good boundaries, taking care of yourself, being able to let people know what you're comfortable and not comfortable with is probably one of the biggest things that I teach my clients that struggle with anxiety.
when you can care for yourself, then the world isn't quite so scary. It's still scary right now, don't get me wrong, but at least I know that I can do what's right for me. So boundaries is huge. Um, another thing I will say is monitor what TV you're watching. I met with a client earlier today and we talked about the TV show she was watching. It was like, I don't know, it wasn't MSNBC or Fox or one of those. It was something a little more trivial, like I, whatever it was. But I wanna say that most of these are not gonna be useful at this point. Like we can absolutely go down really scary rabbit holes. The media, and I don't care, like this is not a political thing, okay? This is just an across the board, especially the national media is, you know, they jump on the one-offs, they jump on the outliers, they jump down the extreme. And when we watch that, that becomes a normal for us and that is fucking terrifying. I will tell you, me personally, I have to really be aware and mindful of the media that I consume, that's social media, that's news, that's whatever. I'm getting my information from the CDC. I will be honest, as far as I can tell, our local media outlet, so local TV shows, and I don't watch, TV, like, I don't watch local TV, but online, News Gazette, and especially, in my opinion, the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District what the hell you guys are amazing so if you want to know what's going on my top two cdc because it's just facts without the emotion and the fear and the champaign urbana public health district they're having lots of the live town halls that you can watch online you can see it on facebook um and every time i've watched those i have come out with a better understanding of what's going on a better understanding of what the risks are and a better understanding of what I need to do to take care of myself and my community. And to me, that is the hugest relief. The first time I felt grounded regarding all of this was after watching Julie Pride talk about what's going on in our community. So I cannot say thank you enough to them for being so, just so beautiful and so amazing and so supportive. And they helped me feel safe. So let's talk about a few techniques and I'm only gonna do a couple. I said this was gonna depend on how many people came. I know this got thrown together at the last minute. I know the timing is really weird. So a couple techniques. And the first one, I have to look and see what I was talking about. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked. Um, oh, some other things that I think are important while we end up self-isolated and not working more and more Personal hygiene, especially people that struggle with depression. One of depression's things is we stop taking showers, we stop brushing our teeth, we stop brushing our hair. Uh, that's because if I don't brush my hair, I'm fucked. So <laughs> we stop getting dressed. And I, I do okay with personal hygiene, but I'll tell you, if I have a day home alone where I don't have to do anything, I tend not to get dressed. I think during these times we need to keep as structured as possible intending to these things is super important so keep as big as much of a routine as you can try and get up at the same time that you normally do try and eat your meals at the same time take your shower brush your teeth take your vitamins take your meds please take your meds um get dressed women for me at least getting dressed includes wearing a bra there's some difference i know that's a little crude but to me that means all right i'm dressed i'm ready for the day shoes Again, that feels super weird, but if you put on your shoes, there's a different psychological between I'm lounging around, I have nothing to do versus, okay, I'm ready for my day. Even if you're not walking outside, having your shoes on shifts how you feel about things. So maintain that routine. Please, please maintain your personal hygiene. This is not a shaming thing. I'm not talking about it's gross. I'm talking about a mindset. If makeup is important to you, Put your makeup on. Like, I'm not. I'm kind of looking forward to it. I only wear makeup to be socially acceptable, so I won't wear it. But for some reason, a lot of women, putting on their face is the same as, I don't know, being part of the community. So if that's you, put your face on in the mornings. So please do all of that. Let me see what else I had. I lost my, I lost my way. I am sorry. Okay, so a couple, a couple, I'm going to end with just a couple things. First is I created the event, Zoom. I'm going to have an online support group. The time may change. Tonight it's at 7 o'clock on Zoom. All the information is on, on my Facebook page. 
So the time and the platforms may change over the coming days, but I think for now, I'm just going to do that. And you know what? For a while, if nobody fucking shows up, nobody shows up because I'm doing this. I'm doing these things for me as much as I am for you. If you're feeling alone, if you're feeling isolated, if you're feeling afraid or anxious or depressed, please come join our online support group. I will continue creating events for it until I get the platform and the time stabilized. I asked Zoom to, you have to pay like 200 bucks a month to get a good, a good service with them. I can't do that. Like this is hitting me financially super hard. So I'm like, could you please just do this for me for free? I'm not making money. This is a community service. I'll be shocked if they respond. I'll be shocked if they say yes. But if they do, we'll continue Zoom. Otherwise, I'll have to look at Skype and whatever else. This is not a therapy group. This is a support group that I will host and I will moderate because I am, you know, licensed clinical social worker, but I'm not a therapist in this. I'm simply moderating it and it is completely free. So that's another way to stay connected. Um, one of the things that I like to tell people who struggle with, I was gonna say depression, but we'll say struggle with that negative filter in general is at the end of every day to look for and to write down three positive things. And I think that's super important in our world right now because everything feels like it's shit, right? And so for us to look at and find three positive things, it helps remove some of that negative perspective. This is not pertaining things aren't really horrible right now. It's just saying, yes, but there is also still good. So one of my positives today would be absolutely. I get to go for a lot more walks than I've gone on since the summer. And I really appreciate that and I really enjoy it. Another positive is, I don't know, probably, probably that I get to spend more time with my dogs and I'm starting to catch up on my long to-do list at work. And then I'm gonna start being able to catch up on my long to-do list in my house also. So it can be difficult, but three positives I think is super important. I forgot really fast, there were people, um, oh, somebody just asked how to join the live stream. I'm sorry, can somebody pop onto Facebook and just let her know just to watch? Hold on, I'm sorry. So you guys, how do you see it? Like you just come onto my Facebook page, right? If somebody is actually, like I know you guys are there and I appreciate it, here we go. Dina, yay! I am so sorry that there were so many links. Um, if you happen to find them again, and if you could get screenshots, would you show me? And I'll see if I can't find a better way to make this happen. I am really sorry. I've never, I don't know. I am really sorry. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, and I'm sorry that I didn't realize it until just now. Somebody else replied to, I don't know. Okay, so I had a couple on the, I had a couple questions in the Facebook group where this all got originated. So I'm gonna read them and then I'll respond. So Heather says, oh, Heather says, sorry, I'm getting stuff from, right now it was hidden under the pinned post and I didn't realize I had to scroll down. Sorry about that. I don't even know what's pinned. Oh, how to get to my office, yes. So if you ever wanna come visit me now, you know how to get here, I'm sorry. So Heather wrote yesterday, Right now, my partner is still going to work during the day, so I'm going to be at home alone basically every day for the next two weeks. I have depression, and I'm worried I'm going to drown in it being alone so much of the time. I really enjoy my job and my colleagues, and now I don't have anyone to talk to all day. And my anxiety has been so bad, I've been having a hard time sleeping. And then she goes on, I don't really know what my question is, I just need to know how I can keep my head above water. All right, so Heather, I hope I've answered a lot of that. Exercise, call people, FaceTime, come, please come to the online support group. I feel like it's made for you and for people like you. Sorry, I'm reading Dina's, I told you, like old eyes, so I have to like do the old lady thing. All right, so please get out and exercise. Please call people, please find ways. I suggested to somebody earlier today 
to go ahead and it doesn't even matter if you belong to a church, contact the churches, contact public health department, say, I need people to help. All you have to do is call people, maybe old people, people that are housebound, people that are also living alone, just call them and talk to them. Or say, I need people to do this for me and ask to be put on a list for somebody else to reach out to you and connect with you. Um, absolutely. I think I think this being isolated, not having anybody around is one of my biggest fears for people. So get out of the house, exercise, drive your car, down country roads, listen to weird ass music, um, reach out to churches, reach out to public health department, find ways that you can volunteer safely. I think they need people to like stop by wherever, put stuff in their car and then bring it to somebody's house. You know, not necessarily interacting, but at least then you're doing something for somebody else. So get out of your head and be of service. I truly think that's probably, and, and honestly, this is just a time where we need to, we need to step up and take care of each other. And again, that's also very much, like I remember that after 9-11, right? I remember after 9-11, as horrific and traumatic, and I, I use that word in a very clinical sense, as traumatic as 9-11 was, one of the things that brought me, I don't want to say hope, one of the things that made it a little less worse was all the beautiful stories about people stepping up and helping each other. And this is a time where we need to do the same thing here. So, and now I'm going to read another another post. For much of my life in therapy, my therapist's advice has been to approach. Also, Heather, go find a therapist. There are still a couple people meeting in person. Um, there are definitely people that are doing it online. Not to promote myself, but to promote myself, I'm absolutely accepting new clients. I'm doing telehealth either by phone or video, like not Facebook, but a two-way video conferencing system. I'm Find a therapist that you can talk to on a weekly basis. Okay, so... For much of my life in therapy, my therapist's advice has been to approach things as though I'm overreacting and find logical reasons why things won't be as bad as I fear. Right now, I don't have any of that coping mechanism left because things might be as bad or worse than I fear, and it's coming at us like a slow-moving but massive tidal wave that there's no dodging. Any suggestions? So I have to take a moment because I can, I can feel that, and I... Like physically, I can feel physically that just, I resonate with that. And I understand your fear and I sympathize with your fear. I will say that I truly believe that we are living in a really traumatic time. And I mean that in a very clinical sense. Like this is a fucking traumatizing time. I think all we can do is get through it to the best of our ability. That does not mean avoiding pain. I think this is painful. There's nothing to be done, but limiting the suffering. And I'll talk about the difference between the pain and the suffering in a while. So getting through this, knowing that it's temporary and knowing in the future that there are resources that will allow us to heal. And for me, I'm an EMDR therapist, which means that like I can feel these memories hardening. I can feel, I have no doubt that in six months from now, I'm still going to be like not wanting to touch anything in public. Like it just creeps me out being in public and putting my hands in something or having my phone and putting it down somewhere in public and then feeling like I have to scrub it. EMDR is my solution for that once we're through it. So we have to just get through this. It will be painful we can minimize the suffering and what i mean is that the pain is there the financial loss for so many of us myself included is real we're going to have to do without we're going to have to tighten our belts we're going to have to potentially lose people we love i mean that i i want to say otherwise but it's just it's just true the suffering part is the getting going down the rabbit hole of all the fucking what ifs right so if we look at and this is this is a very buddhist this is a very zen thing so please just bear with me if we look at right this moment right now right here at this time i can speak for myself i am safe as far as i know i don't have corvid even if i do and i don't because i've been very careful 
the chances of it being bad are minimal. Right this moment, my friends and my family, my loved ones are all safe. We are, and I mean this literally, blessed to have plenty of food. We have a roof over our head. Those that can watch this, we have internet, which I think is like a necessity at this point in our lives. Um, this is a painful time. And I will never try and take that pain away because that's stupid and it's useless. But right in this moment, I am safe. To the best of my knowledge, right in this moment, you are safe. And really, that's all we can do. Our future is never promised to us. We just feel that lack of promise more prominently now than we ever did. There is an EMDR exercise, and this is what I'm going to close on, called a container. And I want to teach it to you. And I'll give you just a really brief first. So EMDR is based off of bilateral stimulation. So if we're doing it, I don't actually use the light bar. It's over there. That's why I looked. If I'm doing it in, on, in person, it's about going side to side and tracking with your eyes. So that side to side motion is bilateral stimulation. Um, I teach my clients container using a researched form of bilateral stim, BLS. We know that the way that you can do it for yourself is effective. Again, there's tons of research. It's called the butterfly hug. You can go look it up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, and then I'm gonna ask you guys to do it with me. And I'm just gonna, you either do it or you don't do it, whatevs. And hopefully half of you guys aren't even gonna see this live. So you want your fingers in or cross like this. I gotta get my hair out of the way, sorry. Fingers like this on your chest. And we're just doing a really, <laughs> sorry, it's really weird. Cause I'm raising up like my left hand and on the camera it's going right. So I'm just a little discombobulated. So really slow for calm place, for container, we're doing a slow tapping. So I'll give you guys just a second to go ahead, sit up straight, pay attention to your posture. Um, feet firmly planted on the ground to help ground you. Feel your feet connected to the floor and just tap with me. And now I want you to imagine a container can be anything at all in the entire world you want. A few suggestions should not be something that you see on a daily basis. It should be strong, should be absolutely unbreakable, and we don't want it transparent. I've heard just about everything. Some people use a safe, somebody has a lunchbox, somebody has a big, I don't know, like giant building side safe. I personally have like a little white glowing cube. It's almost like an uh, an Apple kind of, it should be an Apple product. I gotta turn my laptop back on. So go ahead and take a few minutes. And just visualize whatever you want your container to be. Keep tapping, keep following along with me and create that as strongly in your imagination as you can. And I'm curious about how big is your container? Mine is surprisingly small. It fits in, in the palm of my hand, but that's okay. Is it hard? Is it soft? Is it rough? Is it smooth? Hot? Cold? Imagine all the details. What color is it? How does it open? How does it close? And how can you lock it? So take just a couple minutes and really strongly visualize your container. Just really lock into it. And now I want you to go ahead and imagine a way to visualize all the uncertainty, all the what if, all the fear, the out of control, powerlessness thoughts. So for me, some of the ones that I, I don't think will trigger you will be like, I'm scheduled to move Thursday. Will I get my fucking office moved? Should I pack? Should I not pack? 
what will happen if I don't get my office moved? Will my clients come back to a half-packed, disorganized office? See how all these are thoughts that I don't have any control over the outcome. It is what it is, and it's even in the future, so it doesn't matter. I get to make the best choices I can right now and just keep moving forward and, and learning. So visualize all those out of control what if thoughts. Some people use like, like gray slime, post-it notes, books. You don't have to think about these things in detail. In fact, I don't want you to. I want you to think of a way to visualize. I think for me, mine are envelopes that I'm just going to slide into my container. Actually, I have a little ballerina that comes out and gets them, puts them away for me. Don't ask. So just take a few moments, visualize each one of your fears, and go ahead and place them in your container however you want. Now I want you to go ahead and close your container and lock it. And I tell my clients to float their containers into my office as opposed to this room. But since you guys have never been here, I will offer to let you guys float your containers into the room that you can see. You can see my Buddha in the background. You can imagine just laying the containers at the Buddha's feet and he will take care of them for you. So take a few minutes to go ahead and do that. And we're done. So I don't know about you. I was pretty wound up when I started this because going live and not knowing who's going to see it is fucking scary as hell for me. Doing container and doing bilateral stem really grounded me and really helped me settle. I hope that if you tried it, it helped you. Um... I want to encourage all of you to practice that at least every night. Somebody said something about not being able to sleep. I understand that. I Last night was my first good night's sleep since probably Wednesday. I don't have any magic answers for sleeping stress. I wish I did. Container, warm showers, relaxing music, getting up and reading a soothing book. All of those things can happen. I think we might just have some sleepless nights for a while. But I hope the container can help settle you and help you take the, the things that we can't control, the what ifs, and put them away. Okay. I'll give a couple seconds. Do we have any more questions? If not, I'm going to sign off. And again, we're going to do Zoom tonight at 7. Okay. Anything? Going once. Going twice. Going three times. Stay safe. If I get messages or feedback that you guys want me to do more because I have more exercises to teach, I'm sure I'll have more thoughts on what to do to take care of yourself. If I get more questions, I am happy to address them. Um, I'll do another Facebook Live if it's useful. Honestly, if it's not, I won't. This is not for me. I mean, it's for me to get me out of my head, but it's really to be of help. And if it's not a help, then that's fine. Oh, right. So Dina just said, and I hope I say your name right. I'm sorry if I don't, that she couldn't imagine how comforting that padding is, this. It really is. There's something very soothing and grounding. So if I do another Facebook Live, the next exercise I'm going to teach is something called, there are so many. So the next one will be something called Calm Place. Um, and again, it's going to be using this and doing something a little different, but very similar. And I can teach EMDR, resource development, positive exercises online like this, probably for as long as this all goes on. Is there, hold on, I'm sorry, this is so weird. Is there a way we should be able to chat in the window? Honestly, I don't know. If there is, I don't know what it is. There will be tonight. So on our, during our support group, because I've done Zoom like this, I swear to God, I probably, it's harder on the phone. If I'd done it on the phone, I would have known how this works. Um, but during Zoom, it's fairly easy. So everybody has their little videos. 
And hopefully when people aren't talking, we mute. And then when you talk, you unmute and you can talk and everybody else can see you. And so we can like see each other during the video and communicate that way tonight. Today, I mean, we can, I think I can reply. Like you're chatting now. Oh, what just happened? See? So you can kind of chat back and forth, but it's super hard. At least on my end, it's super hard. I can also read your messages and that works. Okay, so practice container. Get exercise, find ways to be of service. Watch what you watch on TV and watch the, the information you information consumption. Go to the safe places, not the emotional one sites. Um, and if there's a request, if there's enough people, we'll do this again tomorrow, a couple days, whatever. Day doesn't matter to me. Time doesn't matter. I feel like I have a lot of time on my hands right now. And again, also, honestly, I lost five or six clients, college students that are out of state, and I'm not licensed to provide services in their state. I have tons of openings. So if anybody wants to link with me for therapy, telehealth until we are allowed to leave our houses again, that's always an option too. All right, peace. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Bye. Uh -huh.